Radio. We are recording. That's one o'clock. Let's crack on. Um, as always, I can't wait to get a haircut. <laughs> so ignore my um, my bob, so to speak. Right. <laughs> going right so this whole um live stream thing today is a bit um of a last minute thing uh, what happened is i posted this oh not the best oh, go away uh, best but thumbnail I thought I... but i i have a thing called the kid creed so this it's this little um book that i read to my kids every single night um and i want to drum into them you know, like a framework, a framework of integrity, ethos, morals, blah blah blah, so they can fall back onto it, etc. Uh, now, I'm not going to commercialise this, etc. However, in the comments, um, there were a load of people saying, "Hey, you should, you know, set this up as a business," blah blah blah. Um, I'm not going to do that. Um, I've got too many things on my plate as it is. However, um, I had a few other people saying, "If you were going to set up a book type business like this," what would you do? How would you go about it, etc. So uh, I will actually go through uh, an example of how I would set up this actual book business because you can, you know, you can emulate it, swipe and deploy, I don't really care. Um, hell, use the words like, um, it will hopefully it will do good. Anyway, so that's what sort of triggered this. Um, and yeah, for those that don't know me, uh, I, I've literally set up I've gone through this process as in setting up a business from scratch at least 20 times over the last 10 years. Um, and the, the only reason I got into business in the first place is because I wanted to bump up my trading account because I got good at trading and I was like, ah, oh, sweet. Um, but, uh, you know, making 10, 20, 30% per year on, a, on like a one grand account or a 10 grand account, it's not going to change your life. So I was like, right, I need a way to, I can, so I can increase my trading account. So... Um, yeah, I got into business and then failed massively. It took me about four years to get good at business um, and lots of failures. So this, I, I do, I am talking with proper experience, not like a YouTube pretender, so to speak. Um, so first of all, let's start off over here. And uh, I, I, I'm just going to zoom in, in on into this because I am forever being a, um, approached by people with ideas and say, hey, sign this NDA, this non-disclosure agreement, etc. I've got this business which is going to absolutely change the world, yada, yada, yada. Um, and I always cringe because I've always said that business, like ideas are absolutely worth jack shit. It's implementation, which is everything. So, um, yeah, so the vast majority of businesses fail not because of the idea, but due to woeful execution and implementation of that idea. Most celebrity entrepreneurs you can think of didn't have an original idea. Uh, they simply executed better, faster, etc. Part of the reason most businesses fail is that they don't know how to attract, convert, and keep clients. Uh, Derek S Sivers, or Sivers, author of Anything You Want, was spot on when he said that ideas are simply a multiplier. And it's a cool way of thinking about business ideas. But the marketing budget is also pivotal. So this is a bit I think he forgot. Um, you can have the best idea and the best execution, but without marketing, you'll never get it out there. And people always have marketing as like the, you know, sub thought. And, you know, they set everything up and they're like, oh, shit, I need customers. What, what do I do now? Um, so, yeah, use this table. So uh, to get a reality check before you blow your life savings on your billion dollar idea, uh, ideas are worthless. So you start over here on the left hand side. So awful idea, minus one, um, weak under, etc. Then you multiply that by execution. Um, so Derek Sivers or Sivers, however you say, he, he just had this bit here, which I think is cool. And he probably meant execution that included marketing, etc. But it, it does need this extra thing. So he was basically saying if you had, you know, a brilliant idea and a brilliant execution, that's a 200 million pound idea. Or if you had, you know, an awful idea with good execution, you know, that will be a minus 100k idea. So yeah, that, that, that is, that's fine. However, I come across people all of the, the time that have, you know, a great idea. Um, they've had, they've got a good track record. They can show that, you know, that they, they can do good execution, etc. Um, so let's just make it simple. Good idea. Sorry. Yeah. Um, great idea. So 15 times, 
a hundred thousand, so it's fifteen one point five million pound business. But I see good entrepreneurs, good business owners, that can do all of this, but they get stuck because they got they can't roll it out. So you need to include the marketing. So you then need to divide it by this multiple. Um, yeah. So the order is idea times execution. Divide that um, by the marketing. So for example, a brilliant idea, so 20, with weak execution, 1,000, and a low marketing budget, so 0 to 10 grand, is a 2,000 pound business. Uh, and on the other side, a good idea, so 10, uh, and, a, with, and good execution, uh, 100 grand, so it's a million pound business there, with a relatively good marketing budget, so multiply of 2, there we go. Um, yeah, it's a two million pound business. So use that um, the next time you, you you come up with an idea and think, oh, it's an amazing idea, it's gonna make me millions. No, there, there's a bit more to it. So hopefully that bit makes sense. Um, so moving on, we then move into the napkin planning stage. So if anyone that um, know, yeah, in fact, Adam, spot on, SpaceX, great idea, but if you don't have the budget to do it, you, yeah, you can have the best team in the world, the best idea, but you've got no money to implement it, you're never gonna get it, get it out there. Um, and so, yeah, unfortunately, raising capital is a skill that you'll need to get uh, a clue about um, moving forward. Um, bootstrapping it, so that the term bootstrapping where, is where you simply grow your business from the grassroots using the revenue that you're, um, that you're generating to grow. I've done most of my businesses via bootstrapping, and yeah, it's good, you can get some good growth early on, uh, but you will hit a glass ceiling at some point, unless you properly um, create a, a sort of mar a marketing engine, so to speak. Um, the Sorry, I got distracted by the, the chat box. I'll, I'll answer that um, uh, question in a minute, mate. The, yeah, so I completely forgot where I was going. I'll just answer it now. So the question was, um, how do you quantify the weak, good, bad? Do you have a framework to give you that answer? No, uh, unfortunately not. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, an idea, I guess you need a bit of hindsight, but um, I mean, like for example, a brilliant idea would be um, to take out the whole of the property market by, as in like right move, or, or like, uh, estate agents, etc., by having a blockchain, uh, like putting everything, like a right move type thing on blockchain, all of the deeds to the land, the title, blah, 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 it's all on there. Um, and, you know, eventually, I mean, this will happen. You'll be able to buy a house, you know, and for like un, under 100 quid fees, etc. So it will completely bypass solicitors, blah, blah, blah. It's a brilliant idea, but you need a lot of money to get it out there and you need ex execution. A shit idea would be, hell, selling rubber dog shit <laughs> bad idea and you can execute it amazingly uh, with a massive budget but it's just going to end up with minus money I look at we work we work it's not an awful idea I guess it's a so-so idea at best um, and they executed it amazingly they had a massive budget but there is it's a negative business so anyway um, yeah, so napkin planning. Anyone that knows me uh, or has been around me, I, I cannot enter a restaurant <laughs> without you know doodling on a napkin. So let's say you have a, an idea of some sort and I I wouldn't get your head in the clouds. So I, what I wouldn't do is go, right, I'm, I wanna sell it, create this business and I wanna exit for 50 million quid, etc. cetera. Um, so it's baby steps. So yeah, your business could end up doing this per year or an exit, some of that. But I'd keep it small to begin with. Um, it's one thing I've just found. Just keep it. Obviously, everyone thinks, oh, you got to think 10x, 10x, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, well, I want a million pound business, blah, blah, blah. But you're just going to get lost in the clouds. Um, you need it. First of all, you need an actual business that works. So, um, so you have to be realistic. I'm not trying to we all over your dreams here. But I don't know. A good target would be something like, right, I want to exit my job or whatever. So, um, I'm going to target three grand per month income, okay? And, th and, th and that's profit, so that's the key thing. Don't look at revenue, that's, that you know, turnover is vanity, profit, sanity, and all that. Um, but actually, if you go one step further, people could look at profit, but even profit isn't really what you want. 
what you actually wish what want is distribu distributable cash flow so unencumbered distributable cash flow remember profit that that that's not unencumbered that has you know corporation tax or various forms of taxes applied to it um, so normally when you see in the news etc this company's doing x amount profit what they're talking about is EBITDA so earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization and what I now prefer to call EBITDAC so earnings before interest tax depreciation amortization and coronavirus um, so <laughs> there's so many businesses that are, you know great businesses that are now screwed after COVID and some businesses that are now thriving due to that so EBITDAC is actually a far better thing so um, ignoring that let's let's look at three grand a month um, distributable cash flow as in take home income let's say um, so yeah you don't need to spend too much time so yeah just pluck a number out of your ass and go right and go with it so three grand a month nice um, then you need a basic idea um, I haven't spaced this out properly <laughs> um, basic idea now don't go into the whole corporate bollocks of um, coming up with some mission statement that means absolutely nothing I mean just go onto any sort of b2b website um, and it'll be like we exist to blah 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 and it's like Jesus like, I don't I don't care uh, and again people get stuck in this whole avatar um, now back in the day I think it used to work but these days we I think you need yeah, I think realism um, is, is more important these days. And so what typically happens is like, right, think of your perfect customer. What is their avatar? Um, is, you know, what what's his or her name? What do they do? What's their job? What do they spend? Blah, blah, blah. Now, it, it is handy. But the thing is, if you're just going to laser target your, your marketing to that person, you're literally effectively trying to get sh take a shotgun out and into a paddling pool and trying to, you know, go fishing in a paddling pool um, and yeah you'll, you'll get your target but you're missing the bigger picture your 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 TAM your totable your totable that's a new word totable I like that total addressable market will be tiny so what I actually prefer is that you need to, to basically target so yeah target um, a massive ocean so to speak and then using people's behavior uh, behavior um, so they basically filter themselves out and then you can do more but I'll talk about this when we uh, get in, get into the marketing bit so let's sorry I'm sort of skipping forward over here so ignore avatar what you need is to you're you're effectively solving a problem okay um, and so you and it's not just a problem it's a circumstance and that's the thing that I always stick in my head so it's a circumstance um, so when someone wants, I know, clean windows, let's say, you, you, you don't want it. It's that whole drill bit, um, you know, <coughs> drill bit thing. Everyone has heard of the, the, the analogy, you know, you don't go to the B&Q to buy a drill bit or, you know, a drill or whatever. You you do it for the hole in the wall. But I think that's, that's wrong. You don't want um, a hole in the wall. No one wants a hole in the wall. You, you, you want the ability to put a picture up on your wall um, with your family etc so that when people come to your house people go oh wow that's a nice picture and then you can talk about your you know bullshit holiday story which no one really cares about um, so so it's a circumstance so um, basically you have to get uh, everyone is in an undesired present and they all want to go to a desired future okay so this is really, really important, okay? Um, and for those of you who are in the in the WAP, the Wealth Action Plan, I apologise. Some of today you would have heard, but repetition is the mother of learning. So um, suck it up. Um, so everyone is in. in let, let's take healthcare. Like I know nothing about nutrition and health because I eat like a slob, um, and I rely on my genes to keep me thin, which isn't the best. You plan. can you can hire me if you. Sorry. You can hire me. <laughs> um, I would if I even wanted to do exercise. <laughs> um, I walking up my stairs is too much for me these days. So, yeah. Anyway, so everyone's in an undesired present. Everyone. Um, so everyone, you know. Let's let's take as I said, health. <laughs> Using a, a subject I know nothing about. Um, 
everyone wants to get rid of that tie around their waist or they want a six pack or they just want to shed a few pounds or just be healthier inside, you know, less clogged up arteries, whatever. They're, they're over here. Now, everyone has some sort of vehicle, right? Whether it's trading or whatever, I can't draw for shit. But everyone's in a vehicle and th most of the time, they are the vehicle that they're in or that they believe or that they signed up to is inadequate to get them up the hill to their desired future okay um and what people don't like is going huh your your vehicle shit you're an idiot um you need to basically um present to them going oh it's not your fault um the vehicle you're you're in isn't your fault that you're in you've just been misled by other people or whatever so um you need to present i don't know a better vehicle um, this is an aeroplane um, so yeah um, and so that's what you need to promote you need to basically you you have to make sure that your audience understands or you, that you you basically understand their circumstance you understand their pain their problem etc and that what they're doing at the moment may not be right but it's not their fault and that you have a solution and the solution is your new vehicle whatever it may be you want to tidier house great well you're a window cleaner your solution is that you can clean it i don't know um but hopefully you get the idea so don't come up with some rubbish corporate jargon just going i mean it could be as simple as you know that so in fact uh let's go sideways instead of down so you could like even on your website you go um you know how and then problem, you know, you know how um, Siam hates walking up the stairs to every day, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's annoying, isn't it? Yeah. Um, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't I'm not going to type this. It'll take forever. Wouldn't it be great if you could get to your office upstairs faster? Blah, blah, blah. Because blah, 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 blah. Yes. Well, here's a solution. Here's a stair lift or here's an elevator. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and then obviously once you've sort of done that, you can then distill it into a nice catchphrase or a nice just simple two-liner of who you are as what is the problem and who you are as the solution okay really simple don't spend too much time on this to begin with remember we're just napkin solving uh, napkin planning so you can spend proper time um, doing this so for example I'm gonna um, that book business is like the problem is um, you know kids read stories their uh, sorry parents read stories their books every every night wouldn't it be cool if you were reading, reading them educational books, etc. I'm just going to turn the fan on because it's boiling in here. Making sure to duck so you don't see my underwear. <laughs> I'm dressed from the waist up, as always, uh, these days. So, um, bu -bu 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 yes, yeah, so that's that. Now we need to get into product architecture. It's really annoying how I have not spaced this enough. Anyway, product architecture. So, most people come up with a business and, that, and they have one product and they will live or die off that product. And what they, they may do is they'll, they'll you know, they'll, they'll spend money on marketing to drive them to their one product. And <coughs> it'll be, yeah, uh, and they, they may get a, a quick boost of, you know, sales, etc. straight away because their friends and family will pity buy from them or whatever. whatever. They may get a um, some question, uh, sales straight away, but it won't be a sustainable business. And so they have to go, oh, okay, uh, I need to get into marketing. So they'll do any form of marketing or they'll pay someone to do it but guess what the profit from your product will be less uh, so yeah for example it will be less than what they're spending so if they're making you know a hundred pounds profit per product or service that they're selling and they first get into Facebook Google YouTube marketing etc they'll quickly find that you know it's probably cost them 500 quid to get them that customer and they're like ah oh, Facebook ads doesn't work, Google doesn't work, and then they're stuck. So what And th what they then do is they blame Facebook or Google, etc. And so this is quite um, sad because I see, I've seen this loads of times where, you know, you have a business owner, a new business owner, their enthusiasm, so E, is through the roof, you know, they're, they're massively hardworking, that's not a problem. Um, they, you know, they're ambitious, which is good. They want to change their life, which is good. They have a, a business which is okay, um, an idea which is okay, but you know, it's sufficient. You know, they're, they're going back to the whole business um, idea, etc. It's sufficient to get them their three grand a month or thirty grand a month or, or whatever. But the missing element is that they they they, they don't know how to um, attract, convert, and keep their clients.
which is the key thing, and then they eventually give up. Um, we, we, we're just saying, I've got a good, or oh, should be smiley face. Uh, and they get disheartened. And I see so many people that they do that, they give it their best shot for a year, and they end up just winding it down. They're probably 10, 20, 50 grand underwater, and then they go back to their old um, work or whatever it may be. And then they'll never touch business again. And they will be horrified and um, haunted by their experience that they'll never do this again or go business is risky well yes it is risky but um, leaning on what I do with trading is all about our multiples um, in fact let's not go into that um, long story short you need to be prepared to I mean like I did I, I heard this stat ages ago that nine out of ten businesses out of ten businesses fail so I was like, oh, screw this. I'll just set up, I'll aim to set up 10 businesses and one of them is bound to be lucky enough um, and, and win. And guess what? It took me three, maybe four attempts and it was lucky number three, four, I can't remember, um, which did well. And then the more you do this, the easier it becomes. Um, and I know it's, it's daunting. If you've never set up a business, there's so much you need to, you, that will scare you from the legal side, the, the mechanics, the, set, the systems, the marketing, the hiring a team getting customers how you know making sure the pretender syndrome or imposter syndrome where you think oh my god what if my customers realize I've ne i don't even know what i'm doing well guess what most businesses haven't got a clue what they're doing <laughs> so um i still don't know i have a, have a clue what i'm doing sometimes so I, I wouldn't worry just as long as you do what's best for the client that will always keep you um yeah always put Pro, uh, clients over profit if that makes sense and you, you, you'll be fine and prepared to do yeah prepared for this be prepared for this so these days if I set up a business these now I've personally this is my own stat that I'm plucking out of my ass I reckon I've got a 9 out of 10 chance of that new startup being successful it's not because I'm great it's just I know no, I, I just know what not to do um, like with everything I just learn learn, learn via trial and error um, so then you need to look at the rough costs. So the rough costs in general, so you have two things. So you have um, direct costs and OPEX. <clears throat> um, so the, I'm, I'm keeping things broad brush here, nice and simple. So the, the direct costs are, what does it cost when someone buys something from you? So let's say you're selling a widget and the, you're selling it for one pound, okay? Well, how much does that widget cost you to actually buy? You're buying it from China or whatever, whatever. So let's say it's costing you 20p to buy. Okay, so that so that's the 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 you you know the unit cost, but obviously you've got shipping, taxes, insurance, or you know, or let's say shipping or postage, etc. So the posting, whatever this may cost another 20p, etc. Um, and I'm just going to add something else just for shits and giggles. So all of a sudden, you now know that your direct costs are 50p. So when you make a sale for a pound, you know that you've, you know, your so this, but you know that if that's your 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 direct costs, you'll then straight away know what your gross margin is, and your gross margin, and and also your gross profit. So your gross profit will be 50p. So one quid minus 50 is 50p. So and here's a thing don't be misled here a lot of people get to stop at this stage and go ah oh, cool in this case what this means is sweet I'm gonna make 50p profit per thing wrong um, because we've got OPEX your operational expenditure ie monthly outgoings um, <clears throat> and there's more than you think this list will go on and on and on and every Pretty much every six months or so, I should do it more often. Every six months, I have a, a little personal audit of my OPEX in, w in every business, and I go right. What am I spending, which I, I really shouldn't? And pretty much every quarter or every six months, I do this. I find like five grand a month in OPEX, which I can just kill. It's like why? I'm like I'm, I, I'm a sucker. I will buy everything from Facebook mainly due to curiosity because I'm just interested in their funnels etc so I, I literally buy everything I see <laughs> um, just out of curiosity and, I, and most of the time I end up in some sort of subscription which I wasn't aware of anyway so your OPEX will be oh, it depends how big you're, you're gonna scale this up if it's gonna be like a part-time you know home type business you, you may not need an office so you, you know uh, rent so you, yeah you got rent you got utilities 
<clears throat> you've got your online infrastructure and when I say that that's gonna be a number of things from web hosting to a landing page subscriptions all sorts of stuff like that um, phone line blah 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 blah. it's you know and maybe staff if you've got some people helping you so you have to include all, all of these and then eventually once you know uh, in fact going back to cost I'm just a bit of a side side step here um, I don't want to go into accounting because this will put you all to sleep but in a nutshell um, sales <coughs> minus um, cogs so cogs is cost of goods sold I direct costs etc that gives you your gross profit this is handy and then you need to minus your OPEX and this will give you your well um, I, I'll just say EBITDA so I'll, I'll put profit in little parentheses etc um, because that's not actually what ends up in your account because there's all sorts of other bits and bobs uh, you know taxes and um, what whatever but for now let's just let's just use this profit so I'm, I want to keep things simple <clears throat> so yeah and hopefully that bit makes sense with the costs but again with a napkin planning stage I will literally run through the cost and you know you know lick your finger put it in the air type thing um, and then you do some basic maths so here we get into the maths bit so the the it, it could be something like let's let's stick with that widget again or no let's do something else so let's say you've got a product and I don't want to go through all of the you know the costs etc. Let's just say you um, you have a product you're selling it for a um, hundred pounds. Okay, you're selling it for a hundred pounds, and you I don't know. Let's say after costs etc. Yeah, let's just do this. You got fifty pounds profit. Okay, so and this so the when I say profit over here, what I mean is that you know, at the end of the day, after your OPEX and gross profit, blah blah, blah um, you're, yeah, you, you're left with fifty quid profit. Okay. So what this means is, if you then need three grand a month, take home. So that's the key thing, take home. Um, you, I, I would aim to do a little bit more than that because what you don't want to do, what you don't want is to bleed. Uh, uh, and choke your business to death because what what I see happening is that someone you know you people do really well they get to this and then they'll extract all of the profit of the business every month which leaves the business with zero cash zero um, war chest etc and then when something bad happens like they have a bad month um, they're like oh shit um, got no sales can't pay my bills etc so you must not you have to think of your business as a it is a real legal entity, but think of it as a person. You don't want to leave them dry, uh, completely bare every every month. So what I would do is work to a, a fifty percent uh, divvy. So what this means is you're going to take home fifty percent of the profits every. Or in fact, when you're starting out, screw it. Let's call it seventy five percent. So what you're going to do is you're going to take. Ah oh no, let, let's stick to fifty. If you want to be safe. So yeah, have a 50% divvy. Um, so 50% goes to you, 50% stays in the business. So that way your business can start building up cash because you need a war chest, you need um, you know, buffer in case things go wrong. Remember, it's just like a normal person, so most people would agree it's, it's wise to have three months worth of outgoings in cash for a rainy day. Well, have three to six months of you know, cash in your bank. Uh, just in case um, and also you need marketing budget you need money to go and get customers clients etc marketing so what this means is that if you want to take home three grand a month and by the way at this point you don't even need to worry about VAT because you're not above the threshold if you're looking at these numbers so really you need to get your business to the point where it's making roughly six grand a month okay so still going so this is actually your 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 goal that's profit so if you're making um, 50 quid profit you need a uh, per widget etc what this means is you need to sell 300 uh, uh, yeah 300 sorry just 
just my maths is I I am living proof that you don't you can do well in life and being shit at maths at the same time. Um, so you need 120. Sorry. <laughs> so that's how good I am. Um, you need 120 sales per month. So, and if you get 120 sales per month. Um, that's roughly six grand a month profit. You can take home three grand, and you can keep, and and your actual business will will get three grand a month as well, uh, and you can start growing that up. Remember, you you must not choke your business, um, and that's what most people do. Um, if you if you want to use business as a way to for wealth growth and uh, uh, wealth generation and to basically basically change your life, then yeah, don't choke the business. So so that's the basic math. So then. Sent to then you're like okay I need 120 sales per month uh, and the reason I do it this way and not looking at revenue is because people get fixated on revenue um, and and also they can get scared because in order to get you know um, six grand a month of profit you know that they're looking at you know 12 grand a month call it revenue and like Jesus Christ 112 grand a month etc um, it's scary and just don't be scared you need to be you I guess put your big boy big girl pants on uh, and, and go for this so um, yeah so 120 sales so that's that's the maths bit now I can go even further but we'll get on to that when we talk about marketing so I'm just gonna have a slight pause here are there any questions that so far from what we've covered in this first side section over here from the business idea to the napkin planning please unmute yourself or pop them in the box I just want to address things as as they come. Any questions? Sorry, I've got a, 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 more of a statement, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm one of those professional people that put people to sleep for a living, so I'm, a, I'm an accountant. Oh. Um, <laughs> and um, I, I find so many people obsessed over the operating expenses, yeah. like on such a minute level that it actually holds them back. Yeah. Um, you know, so like telephone contracts, they'll spend hours shopping around for things. Oh, Jesus Christ. And they could have spent that time on on getting new sales in. Yeah, that that is so true, 100%. Um, I met someone that spent, what was it, two or three days researching the hell out of payment um, accounts, so merchant accounts. And yeah. this person was in analysis paralysis, paralysis b between PayPal, Stripe, um, World Pay, and I think Easy Pay was the other one, and Easy Pay, etc. Um, and this person, um, I've used this example before, you know, made a whole freaking Microsoft Excel spreadsheet with all of the costs, etc. And going, Simon, I really don't know what to do. Which one should I pick? Because they've got the pro. And I was like, Oh my God! Look in the spreadsheet. That you know, it would have taken this person two hours to just compose the spreadsheet. Um, and what I was basically saying is like, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. And then this person was um, going on about the charges of Stripe and PayPal. And they'll go, oh my God, how dare they charge three and a half percent or, you know, plus 20p per transaction, etc. Um, yeah. Going like, how dare they? They're making a fortune. And you need to re you need to change your the way you think about it so when I see stuff like this and I go like so here I, I really don't give a shit it, like unless it's 25 percent I don't you know that would be egregious but three and a half percent hell five percent I don't care you I, the way I look at it is that I, I say to the, the world or myself is that ah isn't it great that we live in a world where I can simply set up an online shop in a few minutes and all I have to do is pay three and a half percent of the, the transaction volume price etc how cool is that that we live in a world that we can do that um, and it's near next to free and then you build your whole business using a really expensive payment provider etc so that when you start getting getting volume up and you you know you've got an actual business then you can just go oh hello world pay I will take your half you know quarter of a percent plus 10p or wh whatever um, and because that single that mo that the, the second you do that you've then saved yourself thousands per month if your volume is high enough etc um yeah. I, I i once did this with i can't remember which business but i remember i saved it was a good three grand a month from moving from stripe over to world pay 
Um, I was like, sweet. But the, the, the key thing is, get your business going, dick around with costs later, because you can always shave costs. Um, yeah, so as Stephen said, yeah, complex pro pro procrastination, yeah. Um, people love sharpening the pencils. I call it sharpening pencils, where they'll do everything in a business, all the easy stuff, which doesn't actually move the needle. So they'll get the letterheads, they'll get their business cards. They will then try and spend 15 grand, 10 grand on a fancy website. They'll get everything ready. They'll get the phone lines ready. They'll in incorporate the business. They haven't got a business. They've got all the fancy stuff. And the, yeah, so what I am, um, and, and the reason I'm going off on this is that I've, I've got a business um, where, in fact, let's look at the real estate trader. Some of you know me from the real estate trader. The first three years, so in fact, I was talking to James here. So. Um, a lot of people have uh, website procrastination. Well, I ran RT for three years with a crappy um, ClickFunnels landing page. And those three years, I think I hit a, my first glass ceiling. I stuck it at like 300 to 350K revenue per year. So I was running a, a 300K revenue business per year and all I had was a shitty landing page. Like, I didn't need, I, you don't need fancy website stuff. And put that into contrast with my one of my first businesses, I spunked 13 grand on a website which I never actually used. <laughs> like, it, it was ridiculous. Um, I got conned by this, um, well, yeah, conned. It was me being a, a, an absolute naive moron, letting my, and I didn't know enough, and I let this, this scammy Norfolk-based web company um, screw me out of 13 grand for a website that didn't even work so but yeah so I did have anger at that point but I've grown enough and actually since then I now know that it wasn't their fault you know a scorpion will always sting a wasp will always sting etc I was the idiot so it's my fault right any any questions uh, blah, 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 any no okay I'm gonna move on happy one yeah, yeah go for it great. Yeah, uh, the um, the click funnels. Yeah. Are you going to be talking about those? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Please, if I forget because I I have a memory of a goldfish, please um, prod me again because it's a valid point. Um, so, moving on. So let's move over to here. Right. Get that hundred percent zoom in. There we go. So client attraction journey, um, otherwise known as for some people funnels now I th everyone loves doing controversial marketing these days and and I've seen a lot of marketers go funnels are dead funnels don't work blah 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 um, well they do they they, they 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 whatever you want to call it you if you want to call it a bucket a, a process I've called it a client attraction journey at the end of the day it's it's a funnel um, but I, I think it's a bit inhuman calling it a funnel. I prefer client attraction journey because that's what you're doing. Marketing is simply you're trying to attract, you, attract your your you know uh, someone that you can help into your envelope, so to speak. Um, the and I guess in a in a nutshell, all you're doing is you're basically you're getting eyeballs onto your, your website. Well, let's redo these eyeballs. You're, you're getting website onto you, or your, sorry, eyeballs onto you slash website, etc. what you do. And then if you're good enough, or if you're, obviously there's, there's lots of variables here, and then you need to service them. So deliver, service, etc. And what you're doing, and you need, obviously you need to fulfill what you're, you're promising and it needs to be a happy, happy relationship. They're happy that they're with you, etc. And once you've got a happy customer or client, they will stay with you. Um, I mean, just look at all the businesses that you have a direct debit set up to or think people that you're constantly buying from, like Amazon. Amazon's a great example. Whether you like Bezos or not, I don't care. Um, like Amazon is a freaking amazing business. I don't care if you hate him or, you know, oh, he's a filthy billionaire. Well. I can buy stuff. In fact, all my shopping is done from Prime, Amazon Prime. Like it turns up next day, I'm happy. I may spend an extra quid per unit. You know, I could root around the internet and find it a few, you know, a few percentage cheaper. But I like I pay for convenience, and a lot of people pay for convenience as well. 
So it's a great business. So and I will continue using them until you know that stops. So when we look at um, oh yeah, so I'm going to go back one because I, I've breezed over probably the most important thing over here, which is product architecture. Jesus Christ, how do I miss this? Whoopsie, I don't want to delete it. I was trying to underline it. Um, I'm going to simply move side, uh, move down here. So let's move down here. So product architecture is one of the most important things you need to be aware of. So as I said, most people have one product, one, one something, but it's a staircase. So, so you, what you need is a product for prospect, a product for lead, product for client. Okay. Uh, let's keep it simple you, uh, and then maybe, mm, yeah, let's, let's just keep it simple. Let's ignore this, this step for the moment. This is an optional. Um, the, or, yeah, or a value ladder, wh whatever you want to call it. So a product for a prospect. So remember, a prospect is someone that is looking at you or you may have caught their attention online and they're not sure if they like you, want you or whatever. So you need to have a product for these people and typically these are cheap so this will be cheap it will be quick or it needs to be quick easy access um, and it needs to deliver value so a lot of people uh, have, typically they've gone for you know free trial or like some sort of trial uh, it could be a PDF book or a real book it could be you know 10 tips type thing you know th there's all sorts of things now as I said it could be either free or cheap um, I don't I've actually found that free stuff doesn't work um, so I would yeah and a, a lot of people call it a tripwire you know marketers um, but anything from sort of one to well, it depends on the product actually I've got a free you know product for prospect you know um, which is 99 pounds but let, let, I'm just gonna say cheap Okay, so all you're doing is you're getting these these not sure people to have a little taste of your food, so to speak. And if if they if they like it, then you've got then you need a product for your lead because remember, once they've got your once they've opted in, they've got your P for P, um, they're now a lead. So you then need to ascend them up your product architecture to your next thing. So um, it could be hell, it could be a paid trial, it could be something else. Um, like for example if you take a, a, a garage a car garage their typical thing is like a cheap MOT <clears throat> over here and then guess what <laughs> after the MOT oh you need this this and this and so this you know um, fix car type stuff um, and then it could be like oh you know oh, actually you need a new new engine need new tires blah 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 so Every, every business w should have this sort of architecture, obviously. I'm just going to ignore it. It wasn't the best example. Just plucking it out of thin air. But um, yeah, so you need a product for a lead. Um, sorry, lead. Whatever that may that may be. So let's say, that for, for example, this could be a free, something free. It could be like a free tip sheet or whatever. Then this could be your um, tripwire, as, as some people call it. You know, anything from one to, you know, 30 quid, one off, etc or hell, 99 quid it could be. Um, and then your core product, this is your product for clients. So once they've, by the way, once they this lead has bought um, this thing, they're now a client, okay? So you then need a product for client or customer. Um, quick one, client, I don't like customers, I like clients. Client is repeat custom. So you have a relationship with a, with a client and a customer is sort of one-off. Like if I go, <clears throat> you know, I may be driving and I need my car wash and I'll, you know, I see, you know, hand car wash on the side of the road. I'll go in and get a car wash, but I'm just a customer. I'll just use them once unless they really incentivize me to be, you know, you know a regular buyer or whatever. And then I'll be a client. So, yeah, that, that's a key definition here. You want clients, not customers. <clears throat> so, and then you have your core thing and this should be where you know you make um, a fair amount of your revenue so most of your revenue like um, should be over here and then it's optional I'd highly recommend it you you then need a profit maximizer 
<clears throat> and the profit maximizer should just be pure profit. So sometimes, uh, in a lot of businesses, you'll see that uh, your the product for client literally is just a break even. So all of the revenue from from this simply pays for everything else: the marketing, the outgoings, the staff, the buildings, blah 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 blah. Um, and then it's the the subscri subscription or whatever it is after that, which will be the profit maximizer. So for example. Um, there is a lot of, oh, I can't believe I'm going to mention, no, I don't want to mention that. Um, a lot of, let's take the, the events industry. I don't like the events industry, but a lot of people will go to these, you know, a free seminar. You've probably done this, you know, um, free seminar. Um, and then it will be, you know, like a, a, well, these days in the events world, it's like buy this, um, 99 or 1997 course or something like that um, but really th th there's no profit there that 1997 is there just to get all the marketing costs back and then you'll be hooked in line and sinker for a 10 to 20 grand mentoring mastermind bullshit type thing all of the profit is over here all of this is simply to pay for the marketing um, so yeah, as I saw, um, what's his the name? Mike Winnett, entrepreneurs. As yeah, now I know I'm mocking them. Um, oh yes, that, yeah, scam your leads. Yeah, <laughs> so I know I am mocking them, um, but it doesn't by by having this process, it is not necessarily a bad thing. The thing that makes entrepreneurs bad is that they they don't they don't deliver um, they don't deliver properly. That they have poor value, so to speak. As in people, they're, they're buying this and they're promised that they'll be completely self-sufficient. But they do that and they realize, ah, shit, the, the, the missing 10%, which will make me self-sufficient, is actually up, up here. Um, so that's when you're misleading people. So, But having this fun, there's nothing wrong with having this product architecture or this, this sort of... Um, you know, uh, client ascension model, so to speak. So long as you are delivering value, you are, you know, you have integrity, etc. You're upfront and you deliver what you're saying. You know, you, does does that make sense? Like, there there is a there is a fine line between um, con and oh well, no, it's not a fine line. There's a massive line between con and good. <laughs> um, there's a massive massive line, but. At the end of the day, you, you just always have to deliver what you promise. Um, yeah, so that, that's the thing, okay? So although I, I, I do enjoy watching those Mike Winnett videos and, and etc., I think a lot of people are blurring the lines, okay? There's nothing wrong with this model. It's so long as you provide good value. I mean, I personally, I don't even, I don't have, like I've got, I guess, I've got two businesses, I guess, which are would be uh, an education providing type thing um i don't have a you know a massive 10 20 grand type thing so it's yeah horses of course as someone would say so uh ba -ba 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 -ba. yeah and i use the example all of the time is the um, the, uh, the guitar guy the this is eight this is like 20 odd years ago um, when eBay was its the main thing. So there's a guy that or, or company that was selling really high-end guitars, okay? That's a guitar, by the way. Um, and the guitars were like, I think it was like $5,000 plus. And he was like, how the hell do I sell $5,000 guitars or, or more? And he realized that the, the people that would buy them would be professionals, so pro musicians, celebrities, blah, blah, blah. And these pros would use a lot of plectrums. And so what he did is he that's supposed to be a plectrum he sold like something like a thousand plectrums for one dollar on ebay and he completely cleaned up and everyone that wanted plectrums were just buying a thousand of them for a dollar in fact some people buying the, those thousand plectrums for a dollar and then reselling those pe plectrums for you know 10p each etc um but what he realized is that anyone that actually really wanted a thousand plectrums they would be a great um prospect for their, their company and so he yeah, sold at a loss, so it was a massive loss leader, loss leader. Um, and then eventually there will be a small percentage, hell, even if it was like 2% that ended up buying their, you know, expensive guitar. Great. 
it's worth it. So yeah, that is my sort of product architecture. I've gone off on one. Let's go back to the core thing because I've realized we are now, I don't know what time is it? 53 minutes in, Jesus Christ, I'm nowhere near where I wanna be. Um, so let's hurry up. Not your fault, it's my fault. Um, client attraction journey. So I'm gonna keep this short. What I would highly recommend doing is, um, yeah, so I would drive traffic. Let's keep it simple. So when I say traffic, as in you know, Facebook ads, etc., and all you're doing is you're driving them to a sales page, and then that sales page is hopefully, you know, sale. Okay, let's keep it super, super simple, right? Um, and let's move this across actually. Let's move it over here. And what you can then do is for those that land on the sales page but that, that they don't buy, you can then you re you can then re repixel them, etc. Um, and do another advert or uh, sorry. Add value somehow, could be video, could be whatever. Um, and then advert and then back over here. So here's a simple thing. Um, so all you're doing is you're driving traffic to a sales page, you're hoping that people buy. And so if they go through, say yes, yes, and you're happy if that happens. But most of the time, um, like I would say 98 to 99% of the time, people are not going to go straight through your your process your your client attraction journey they're going to bounce off this page so this is why you need to pixel people that don't land on your you know that that, that, that don't buy so what you're then doing is you're you're creating a list um, you're obviously you're pixeling them um, and then you need to drive um, another advert to that list so um, so you drive them to that audience. I'll just call it audience. I haven't spaced this right. Um, oh, let's start again. Let's, let's draw this properly. So pixeled audience. Then you 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 basically need to drive. Oh dear lord! I am having a nightmare today. Put that down here. You then need to drive an advert to that pixeled audience, uh, i.e., everyone that's bounced from your sales page, and then you need to. And this advert needs to, you know, be of value. You could help. You could even give them something for free or whatever. But effectively, what you're trying to do is drive them back to the sales page, to then eventually buy. Now you can go completely. You can be really complex uh, if you want. So I'll show you an example of a. If I get find it here ba, 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 ba. get the WAP 30 day here we go so 30 day trial resources so client attraction journey picture one so it could be so this is your product architecture architecture and then you have all sorts of okay obviously not not many people are buying so they're going down here uh, and then you have all sorts of different campaigns so you'll end up with lots and lots of different campaigns and then eventually when you start making money then you can talk about um, money management and stuff like that um, but yeah this is this is cl the client attraction journey uh, and you can be as complex as you want but these days I like to keep things simple so um, so that is an example, uh, but what I would do, yes, uh, da, da, yeah, before we go any further, I would actually make it even simpler. So instead of that, what I've done recently, and I'll show you a real case study, is that what you could do is you could have, so traffic, Facebook, Google, whatever is applicable to you, free trial, well, no. I like a paid trial, so a um, pound trial, and then sale. So remember, the the sole the, here's where a lot of people go go wrong with Facebook or Google marketing. The sole objective of your Facebook ad is not to sell, and that's where everyone goes wrong. They're like, 
here's an advert, buy my shit, buy my shit, buy my shit. Because you're, you're selling, you, that buy my shit advert is going to people that don't even know you or care, etc. The, the sole purpose is to get the click. Because you, you need to drive them to the landing page. So remember, so add, so in parallel to all of this. So the, the objective of the ad is to get the click or the engagement or whatever it is you want. The sales page is to get them to convert. And the whole business or the you know the product or whatever they're buying, etc., is to basically turn them into a client, as in a regular client, etc. So they're the objective, so that so don't sell everything in your ad. You need them so you simply drive them to the sales page and the whole objective of the sales page is to convert them, either opt in or buy, etc. And it, yeah. But in terms of maths, going back to sort of um, napkin maths, etc., um, you, you need to be aware of conversion rate. So for example, if you're driving traffic over to this this free trial or, or not free trial, you know, cheap trial of some sort, um, your the conversion rate is gonna be very low. Okay, so let's just use something like five percent. Okay, so no, you, yeah, so five percent over there. But then you're from those that do your trial to become a full customer, that could be a lot higher. So let's just be conservative, let's say twenty percent. So one in five. So what I would then do is when you're working out the maths is a lot a lot of people go wrong here and they go right let's just do one and then work your way upwards um, I wouldn't do that because you're swimming in a, in the in, the, in an ocean of zero here and there's all sorts of, um, sort of variances high when you're looking at a data sample of one so what I would do is I'd look at 10 um, or no in fact look at your actual target so if for example um, let's go back to the your tar in fact ballpark let's say you wanted what was it three grand a month we were looking for six grand I think it was 120 wasn't it um, so if you wanted to make 120 sales you can then actually work out what you actually need so you go 120 sales then you divide that so if I get my calculator out a uh, calculator you simply go 120 you then divide it by the, whatever that percentage is, so it's 20, so 0.2. Cool, okay. Well, that means I need 600 people to do this trial or wh whatever this, this thing is. Um, and then how am I going to get 600 people? Well, effective, well if, you've got your, if your conversion rate of the sales page is 5%, you then do 600, divide that by 0 0.05, 12,000. Cool, okay. So what this means is that you need 12,000 clicks to get you 600 trials, trialers, and out of your 600 trialers, you'll then get 120 uh, sales. And then remember, we did that, um, what, you know, that previous example. That those 120 sales is your uh, really it's six grand a month profit, but three grand of the month, three grand a month you're taking home. So. Yeah, by the way, this is being recorded. I'll be posting this, so don't worry. Um, so then it's like, okay, so this is what I, I need. So using these conversion rates, what is, what's this gonna cost me? So a ballpark, uh, ballpark is that, and just start with, I don't know, a pound a click. So all of a sudden you realize if I'm spending a pound a click here, this is gonna cost me 12 grand in marketing per month. So if this has cost me 12 grand in marketing and I'm only making six grand profit, this is massive, you know, unhappy face. Uh, like this doesn't work. So this is why knowing basic marketing maths will save you an absolute fortune. I cannot stress how many times, probably five, maybe six times, I've set up a business being completely blind and I've entered a business or I've set, I've spent time energy resources setting up a business where you know my whole marketing funnel was you know massively more expensive than the profit it was supposed to generate um, now sometimes that isn't a bad thing if you you're gonna go on a massive um, user base 
um, drive like a lot of tech apps so tech apps will do this all day long um, look at Amazon sorry look at Twitter look at WeWork Airbnb all of these that like they'll be massively underwater they'll be spending you know 12 million a month to get um, 6 million profit in fact it won't even be profit <laughs> um, but all they're trying to do is get users because the value of their business is in, in how big their user base is but for more mere mortals and plebs like you and I um, we can't do that like we'll go bankrupt um, so this is why you then well you have to if you realize this is your your um, problem you are then forced to do a number of things okay Oopsie. and those number of things is my computer is now crashing it's not good you have to well, one one thing you could do is you could have another level. So remember your profit maximizer. Maximizer. So let's say this profit maximizer um, was I don't know. Let's keep it simple. Um, a five hundred. Let's call it yeah, a thousand pound per month service thing. I don't know. You could be a marketing agency. I don't know. Um, so all of a sudden, and what is the what is the then you need to look at the conversion rate. What is the conversion rate between your customers doing the profit maximizer? Let's say it's low. Let's say it's ten percent, and then you can then you can spit the numbers out. So if that's ten percent, you'll then have twelve down here. So you're still spending twelve grand a month. That's nothing. Nothing's changed there. But if all all of a sudden, this is chucking out six grand per month, and now all of a sudden this is chucking out twelve grand a month. All of a sudden, you now have one uh, a pretty good business because, yeah, you're now making six grand a month profit because this effectively is cancel cancels out the marketing, uh, and that is now your profit, um, if that makes sense. But all you then need to do is then start you know playing around in numbers. But don't th by the way, this is not the only solution. It's not the only solution because over here we're missing out some really important things here. Um, which is your conversion rates like like all you need to do is um, change these like for example um, if you you could easily get this from tw you know going from 20% to 25% so just that one uh, and this could be you know um, get this I mean you could easily double this from 5% to 10% um, so just with those figures let's just even ignore the profit maximizer because some people are reluctant to have a profit maximizer they think it you know it's they, they, they just don't want to do it or they, they, they can't work it out so now you've got your 12,000 clicks but now you've you're getting a 1200 people doing your trial but also your percentage is, is better so 1200 divided by 4 you've now got 300 customers so all of a sudden, you may still, I'm not going to work out the maths, but you may still be underwater or you may not. So there's a few other things. And this is this, where you're tweaking conversion rates, is a thing called uh, CRO, conversion rate optimization. And there's a million and one things you can do with conversion rate optimization. But I want to move this forward. Um, any, okay. So uh, okay, I, I missed all of that. Um, so I think yeah, it was a bit broken up. Um, so can you say that again? Sorry. Okay, maybe it wasn't for us. Maybe it's the background noise. Um, okay, so just quick. Yeah, any questions? Just pop them in the chat box um, before we move on to the next section. So I'm looking at the chat. Uh, Stevens test, research, develop, repeat, and theft. <laughs> if you have enough money, then. Optimize their spend to the market. Yeah, yeah. So uh, again, that's a CRO thing. Um, Stephen, yeah, like carpet clean, wire card stock in free fall. Yeah. So, and it sounded like bog out. Yeah. Okay. No questions. Right. Let's move on. Oh dear lord. So going back to this thing, like how I would launch this business. Um, you, you remember that that book thing, this motivational book type thing 
Um, how, I'm not going to do it, but how would I launch it? Going back to, you know, this is, I said I'd show you how I would launch a brand new business. Um, so first of all, I, um, when in doubt, I have a, oh, where is it? WAP, 30 day resources. So for those that are um, not familiar, I've I've got this step step by step checklist. Now I personally don't use it because it just like like you don't have a dr like a, a checklist to drive a car, do you? You don't go right ignition on, handbrake down, blah blah. Like you just know it's like riding a bike. Um, you don't need a checklist to ride a bike. Um, for me, I'm I'm at that stage now. But for when you're doing your first business. I would simply stick to this checklist, just like pilots do when uh, and, and surgeons, etc. Checklists are good. And so you have to understand that you are pre-proof of concept, um, as in pre-POC, when you don't have a business. You, like you, you have an idea about a business, but you're not sure. So you have to get you know your first marketing campaign out there, etc. So obviously this is it, all done in a logical um, way. So doing things in the right order. And by the way, you'll realize here that incorporating your business and you know getting a proper LTD is nowhere near pre-POC like there's no point incorporating your business until you've actually got a proper business um, so there's all sorts of things I know I'm not gonna go through this checklist we will be here all day um, but it yeah it's all part of the WAP trial so but how would I do this so first of all I would work out I, I would just simply do what I've I've, I've been talking about so um, so yes, people would like the book, okay? Um, we've seen people, they want that, but how realistically, you'd have to look at the price. So what would someone realistically spend on a child's book, etc.? Especially knowing that, you know, there is a library where you can do it for free, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I've I've bought a whole bunch of tailor-made kids' books, etc. So first of all, what I would do is I would cultivate your, your um, Google algorithm, your Google and F and Facebook algo. And what I mean by that is I would literally go to those who are already doing it and click on their adverts, go to the main website, knowing full well that you're going to be pixeled. Okay? Because what will then happen is you will then start seeing their adverts. Um, and then, then you can sort of see what are they selling for. You know, you can look at their adverts and the comments thread in their adverts to see what people are answering. So, in terms of research, I don't really do any research these days. Um, one because I don't care. Because what I don't want to do is try and emulate or copy a business which could be doing it wrong. They could be massively underwater. Um, so I would be very careful on who you research and how you research so that my research is simply just looking at what they do. So um, for example, if we, can anyone think of a, 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 a tailor-made book business? So um, personalized kids books. I don't know, I'm just Googling it one second. Uh, Wonderbly, let's have a look at this one. Do they? Okay. Oh yeah, we've bought from here. We've got this. We've got some of these lost my name books. So what I would then do is, because eff effectively, if I was going to do this business, I'd be taking on Wonderbly, which looks like a, an established business. So I would then look for Wonderbly on their Facebook. Wonderbly on Facebook. Hey, hey, yes, that's good. They have a Facebook page. You can see it's a big business. They've got a lot of people following it, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and they're popping up a chat box. So this is good. So that you can see they know their stuff, but I'm curious about how they're getting their customers. So you can go to page transparency, click see more, and scroll down and go to add library. So even better, this page is currently running ads. Amazing, that's exactly what I want. And then we can see all of the adverts they're doing. So obviously they've got a proper marketing on board and they're doing split tests. You can see they're using you know the split testing, the pictures, the, the copy, blah, blah, blah. Now, don't be fooled by thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this advert. Because this this marketer doesn't actually know what ad is doing the best. The, the, the sheer reason that they're split testing this these two pictures, or these three pictures, with similar ads, so look surprised, the, this is obviously a Father's Day type thing. So this looks like the same text. So they're happy with that text, they're split testing the picture. So and probably the ad set, they're, they're probably targeting different regions, different 
ad sets as well as well but what I would like to do let's try and find one where the, they've been doing this for a while because what you want to see uh, I'll just click on a random one. Oh, now I don't want to go to the page um, see add details okay no sometimes you can not via this bit but you now I will be presented wonderbly ads and the fact that I've been on the website etc if I scroll down a bit it'll probably take a, a day or two but I'm going to um, <laughs> yeah I've been buying lots of remote control aircraft recently <laughs> um, but yeah look at their comments look at the amounts of likes and shares blah 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 so that is literally the only research I do um, but long story short um, let's say I want to sell a book for I mean these are really expensive I think they're like 20 odd quid 30 odd quid and we don't know if they're pro a profitable business by the way so this is another folly of you know um, where is the price probably doesn't tell me I don't care moving on so let's say I'm going to sell this book for 20 quid okay and this book is going to be personalized so you can put you know uh, their, their, their name in blah 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 um, what is it going to cost me in terms of making the book? So obviously I've got the, making the words, the content is free. Um, I could do that myself, etc. But it's the publishing that is the real thing. And um, what I don't want to be doing is buying up a whole bunch of my own stock and then having cupboards and rooms full of stock. Okay, what I would really want is uh, I'd, I'd want to outsource that. Um, so you'd basically create all the, you know, you'd have, you you would then find a factory or like um, a dispenser or a distributor, sorry, where what would ha what they would do is they would, so someone would, uh, uh, they'd print the book. So when someone places an order and they put their little Lucy's name in the book, blah, 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 they'll print it. So it'll be a bespoke book. Then they'll ship it, etc. Okay. So print, ship, yeah. Pick, pack, dispatch. But how much is that going to cost? So you then have to do some research, and you, you probably find that it will probably cost you like 15 quid per book, 10 to 15 quid per book. So this is probably why these personalised books are quite expensive because of this. Because if you want this business to to be scalable, you have to, you ha absolutely have to do that, or you hire full time staff in house to do it for you. Um, but yeah, that could be quite expensive. So. What would I do once I'd sorted that out? I'd probably just take the plunge and just yeah go okay screw it let's let's do it. So really um, let's call it ten quid to, to do that. So in this case, let's just fast forward and say that you know I'm making ten quid profit per book. Okay. In fact, I may need to sell it a bit more. It may have to be twenty five quid, thirty quid, whatever. But let's say I've got ten quid profit per book. Now. I know for a fact that if I do traffic, if I do like um, this down here, uh, where, what is going on with my computer? It's crashing. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll start. If I do traffic to sales page, say yeah, that sort of thing, and and basically drive Facebook traffic to a sales page, etc. Um, it's I I will end up spending probably like if, if the RRP so if I'm selling the book for 20 quid a, a good ballpark is to double it or triple it so I'll probably end up spending 50 quid CPA so cost per acquisition to get a book that's only you know making me 10 quid profit or gross profit um, <clears throat> so it's not gonna work and I've done loads of these before so like these days if you're send, selling a product which is like a one-off thing 10 quid book 100 quid product what whatever you're gonna be spending roughly double that um, in marketing so you, this is why a one product one service business will go bust because of the, the marketing marketing is just too expensive these days um, that or your funnels shit so what I would really want is I wouldn't actually do it to the retail I wouldn't actually take out Wonderbly. So I think what I would do is I'd actually package it up. So my funnel would actually probably be um, uh, Facebook traffic to um, your taster book. No, your so your one book. So one book, 
and I would make that cheap. I'd make it, you know, nine quid, you know, in line with a good book, and it's educational, blah, 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 it's personalized. I mean, what parent, let's just make it 10 quid just to make it easier, so 10 quid. I mean, what parent wouldn't do that? So, well, probably lots, but, but I would then treat this mentally as these are trialers, okay, oh, trialers. And then I would have a package. I would then basically pay, have like a 12 month package um, with something else. I'd add something else. So I would then have something like a um, 12 month, so one a month, uh, plus, I don't know, a kid's course, a kid's educational thing, plus what, whatever. And I, I would charge, uh, I don't know, 150 quid. I'd, obviously, I'm, I'm just plucking things out of my ass here. Um, and then I would do the math. So obviously there's going to be conversion rate, right? So of those that buy this one-off book, how many people are going to then cough up 150 quid lump sum to do this next thing? It could be pretty low. Like you're talking 5%. But if the book is really good, and let's say in this 12-month course or this 12-month journey, you're teaching them a new skill each month. So it could be courage one month. And it'd be like, hey, Lu so it, throughout the whole book, it'd be like, Lucy then did this, blah, 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 and you know, the learning courage, then discipline, um, integrity, blah, blah, 12, you know, times 12. So by the end of the year, they're gonna be really good at knowing these 12 different, you know, good traits to have. So that would be good, blah, blah, blah. But what what's it gonna cost you? So let's say, your CPA over here is going to cost you, if you're selling a 10 quid book, which is good. Mind you, you could get lucky. It could cost you like 15, 20, let's call it 20 quid to get a book. So, I don't know, let's just start with 10. Let's say I want 10 down here, <clears throat> as in 10 of these sales, at 5%. So I then do 10, divide that by 0 0.05. That means I need to get 200 over here. And how much is it going to get cost to get me 200? So times 20. So 200 times 20 is 4,000. So what this means is it's going to cost me roughly 4,000 pounds in marketing to get me 200 sales, as in selling these trial books. That will then get me 10 12 monthers or my big package. But what is this going to cost? So 10 of these at 150, uh, it's only going to be 1150. Oh dear! So then, all of a sudden, no good because these two hundred sales that would have cost, that would have generated two grand in sales, and when you add these two up, um, it's three one fifty. So all of a sudden, you're basically making three one fifty, but you're spending four grand. So this doesn't work. Um, <clears throat> so then you'd have to tweak things. You'd ha you'd have to do it. So this is another reason why I don't really want to do this. I wouldn't do this book thing because. You're not going to make profit if you just do that. Um, you need some. You absolutely need something else. But the thing is, it is marginal. So you're spending that. Or you're spending four grand to make three one fifty. So you could tweak things a bit. So, for example, if you can get your conversion rate better, if you can turn this into let's say seven percent, and let's say you up this a little bit and add a bit more value somehow, um, add more courses, more, you know, worksheets, whatever. Let's say this now. 170 quid um, and you can target better so your conversion rate goes up a bit um, all of a sudden you can then let's let's do the maths now so we, we know you're spending four grand up here in ads um, you're still getting your um, uh, sorry we wanted 200 didn't we so if you wanted sorry yeah so if it's 10 so you, again, I'm starting off with a 10 down here. Now it's 7% conversion. So go back to the calculator. So if you wanted 10 with a 7%, so 0 0.07, all of a sudden you've now got 142. You've got 142 of these. So let's do the maths. And you've now got 170. So this is going to make you, um, well, geez, 17 times, oh my God, <laughs> with 1700. <laughs> Um, sorry, Craig, I know you're an accountant. Everything in brackets means minus, but I'm just doing this. 
uh, ignore this. So then 142 times you're making 10 quid a book. So you'll get 1420 back from this and you're spending that. So let's add these up. Ten, uh, yeah, sorry, I've done something wrong here. Anyway, long story short, doesn't work. You're still spending less. See, this is all I do when I'm doing napkin math. I'm like, does this business work? And I'm tweaking around with, and I do realistic. So what you don't want to do is go, oh yeah, 50% of people that buy this book are going to do this, and that's wrong. You've got to be realistic. Um, so I, I just, yeah, I, I would, unless. So here's the thing. This is why the marketing thing comes in. So remember, I, I mentioned this. Some people could just be doing a, a, a market share grab, where they'll they'll go and plow a million pounds into marketing, or whatever, just to get. Um, the user base and then once you have a user base so let's all of a sudden say that you you run this whole core business ah, you run this whole core business at, at a loss but all of a sudden if you if you pump enough marketing in you could have something like a hundred thousand um, clients ie hundred thousand clients which are parents so you've got a lot of data. You know that these are parents, and you'll know the age of their kid. You'll know the name of their kid. Um, so you've got data. And then it's like, right, what company would like to buy <laughs> buy you? Like, what company would like 100,000 parents? So all of a sudden, your business now has value, not because it's profitable, because of the data that you have with it. So that's why some people do this. Um, this is always why I'm really I don't do much re I don't I barely do any research with other companies because you don't know their target like I could try and emulate Wonderbly and go bust because I don't know like they have a different target than me um, yeah like Instagram purchasing um, purchased by Facebook etc et or you don't even need to sell your business like the whole business here could be a loss leader so this so this is where you have to look at things differently and look at funnels. So move, looking at, um, so the actual funnel could be bigger than you think. Um, loss leader book biz. So the whole business could be effectively the trial and the real profit is an affiliate deal or selling to, I don't know, Gerald's. <laughs> And all of a sudden, every like you you basically sell the data to Gerald's, or you have an a, an a, I don't know some sort of um, deal, and that every and they will then market to that, and then all of a sudden you're going to make money every time someone buys a product from Gerald's, etc. So that could be the thing, or it could be, yeah. So, I think twenty three and me is twenty three and me. I think that's how they. So I'm like this was like a, a genetics thing. So you could put your your DNA, you spit into a swab or whatever. You then post it off, and it tells you um, info about you. Okay. Um, and guess what? It was really cheap. Oh, well, I say really cheap. It was like a hundred odd quid to get. And it gave you it gives you good details on who you are, your genes, genetics, blah blah blah. But guess what? They sold. Who do they sell to? Google. I think it's Google. I need to double check that. But they sold for billions. Um, Oh uh, no, let's double. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll do the fact checking later. But they basically, it was a massive data grab for your DNA, effectively. And they sold all that data to a big company. Yeah, Google. And guess what? Google wants data. So, yeah, that's how I'd launch that book. In fact, <laughs> I think what we've shown here is that I wouldn't launch that book business because it just it's not profitable. Um, so. Let's look at a real life example, okay? Oh yeah, or you can just you so here's my unapologetic um and I'm not apologizing at all because the value in this is insane. So we have a whole bunch of free trials um so so um tools. So if you go to the wap.org, go to the 30-day trial, um you will get all sorts of stuff. So you get that checklist, you'll get this uh this PDF, which one second, the very cheesy name. It's a, your client attraction journey blueprint. It talks about loads and loads of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's stuff that you, you do need. Um, and it's only seven quid and you get 30 days use of the, the WAP. But I want to show you a real life example. 
and that real life example is my fairy pen pal now this is interesting because on my personal Facebook um, someone mentioned da -da -da -da, where is it yeah man Iron Nick, whoever Iron Nick is. Hi, Iron. Um, obviously, that's not your first name. Um, it will be good if you did this live, show regular videos, updates on how that business is growing, see the full journey, ups and downs, it will be motivating, blah, 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 blah. And the thing is, I've already done that. So what happened in November is, um, I obviously, the WAP, the Wealth Action Plan, is a business creation slash wealth generation group, etc. So what happened in, in November is I set up a, a business with my wife called My Fairy Pen Pal. And My Fairy Pen Pal is, so I wanted to do a business where I didn't have any of my existing skills, like non-trading, non-business related. So it has to be completely random, right? So I couldn't, um, like my mate, so for example, my mate, James Sinclair, Jimbo, he, um, he did this recently, and he, but he set up a business in his that was within his own um, ecosystem. So he has like a whole bunch of like party, um, kids entertainment, etc. But then he, I think he set up a, a a business which was selling teddy bears, etc. So he he already had an existing database that he could sell into that business, which would then make instant profit. Now, yeah, obviously if that is your goal, but. It, it was sort of cheating because he had a massive database of like a hundred thousand parents that he could sell into. So what we did with this one, uh, my wife and I, is that like we we ha we are literally starting from scratch. Now, what is my fairy pen pal? It's basically every single week a, a kid will get a letter from Aria, the, the fairy, and yeah, that, that's basically it. So uh, it in a nutshell, and so they look forward to you know getting these letters every week. Blah blah blah. And in the Facebook group, in the WAP Facebook group, if I can find it, groups, ba 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 ba, WAP. And in units, what I did, if we go to sign contents, there we go. So new biz experiment part 10, so we go all the way to part one. And what I did is that I showed everything. So this is me announcing it, um, part two going through all sorts of stuff the marketing blah 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 the costs so what in terms of so wife um, so me I was I, I've basically we, so if you ever go into business with someone else what you should do is always um, look at the responsibilities so for me I was in charge of marketing let's zoom in a bit more marketing and strategy and all the businessy type stuff and my wife um, she looks prettier than that by the way um, was basically content so she was writing all of the stories um, ordering all of the content so it, okay, yeah and ops so she I didn't want to deal with any of the bullshit with the running of the business I just wanted to play with my computer um, so it was a nice team so I do all of the businessy stuff she does the Facilit facilitation type stuff and running the biz so and what we did is that we did a, a fair few trials so we and a lot of them didn't work so what we it was interesting so there's one trial we did where um, it was like a 45 pound trial um, for something like three months I was driving traffic to that to see how many sales we'd get blah 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 and I spent oh, I can't remember I spent like no I think it was like 1500 quid and I got zero sales and zero none of these and it was like the biggest biggest waste um, it was it was interesting and the, the thing that you have to understand when it comes to marketing is that it's not Facebook's fault it's not YouTube's fault it's not anyone's fault the offer is the most imp important part of um, marketing so you could get the best marketer um, oh, I don't need to draw this you can get the best marketer to come up with the best marketing funnel um, client attraction journey on, on the planet but if the offer that they're driving it to is shit you'll end up making nothing okay 
but you could get a, a ship marketer that's driving traffic to a great offer and they'll do very well okay so this is this is the key thing the offer is everything it's absolutely everything um, and so the goal of my fairy pen pal uh, to prove to the wappers basically all we did um, was basically um, I wanted to prove to the WAP and everyone else in the WAP that everything we teach works and I wanted to make and here are the milestones I'm making stay zoomed out I'll just get a fatter pen let's just use a different color we've used black a lot today so the goal was to make 300 pounds per month profit as in take home profit um, within three months starting from scratch not selling to any existing list yada yada, yada. and we did it and we basically got to something like 400 quid a month profit in two and a half months okay and we actually had a you we used the slingshot of Christmas so we did like a Christmas campaign we got a whole bunch of trialers <coughs> trialers um, and then we yeah some of those trialers became clients and and that was good so that was our first target but our first so that was the first target but the, the the other target the main sort of target was to basically get a um, a three grand per month take home and this is for Ellie because at the moment Ellie is on my payroll and I want to get her off my payroll um, <laughs> so well, I was like yeah we need you off my payroll honey you're a drain on my business so we we set up um, that didn't go down well as you can probably guess <clears throat> so the goal is to get three grand a month uh, in in a pretty short order so the product architecture was basically this so we eyeballs is Facebook traffic etc so we had a trial so we what we, we we tweaked and tweaked and tweaked we spent quite a lot well not a lot we, we basically lots of wasted campaigns where we didn't get anything but we found that an eight-week trial for 15 pounds worked an absolute it was it was a treat it was it just for some reason I don't know why but that was a sweet spot with my fairy pen pal I'm not saying oh my god um, I'm not saying it will work for every business but for for this we found we finally found something that worked and then what we were doing is looking at how many would become a sale and a sale was basically 15 pounds per month um, and 15 quid a month worked out with our margins we make roughly actually it's gone down because of the extra costs we make nine pounds per month profit um, so that that was it so what we then did is we drove loads of traffic to this um, <clears throat> oh yeah so what so moving sideways actually what we realized is that trial to sale um, was a 20 percent conversion rate so we had we basically did an Xmas trial, etc., um, and it was it was re so it was a bit misleading because with Christmas everyone's looking for some sort of weird present, etc. But we found that um, we hit that four hundred quid a month profit um, via this anyway. And what we found is that um, the sales page, uh, I did a whole bunch of CRO, so conversion rate optimization, loads of split testing, yada yada yada, and I got it to something like ten percent. So not the best sales page on the planet, but it was good to go, good enough to go. Um, but the conversion rate was twenty percent, and so I was like, okay, that that sort of works. And then in March we did another campaign. So what we did is I drove loads of traffic to this this trial, um, and we got a thousand and twenty trialers. I'll, I'll talk about the stats in a minute, as in the, the, the cost in a, in a sec. And what we don't know yet is the conversion rate. Like, I've benchmarked 20%, so if we get 20%, we're laughing. Um, put it this way, if we get 20% of that, so 1,020 uh, times by 0.2, that would then give us 204 customers chucking out £9 a month. So 204 times 9, um, 18 three six plus the uh, 400 quid a month roughly it's a bit more than that so all of a sudden the business will then be checking out two two three six per month profit um, so that will be good however it's a bit early to tell um, 
but we've, we've so we did it from March till and we shut it off like a week or two ago so we, we basically I wanted a thousand leads um, and then I wanted to see what the conversion rate would be okay so what did it cost me to get this so this is the surprising thing we only spent four and a half grand on ads and and the thing is you don't need a lump sum so what was happening is that these 15 quids were coming in so we were using like we were using the revenue that this was generating to pay for the marketing so basically we got um, if I delete this so so far we got 1020 people paying 15 quid one off so it cost 15 so we made fifteen um, three hundred in in revenue, uh, but obviously there's loads of costs with that. So it looks great that we've got loads in revenue, but don't forget there's it's high costs um, with this pack. Um, but, but here's the thing: we got um, yeah. So long story short, I think yeah. Let's go back to the the other thing. It was it was four and a half grand in cost really. Uh, I'll show you that, that. Let's just get the campaign out. Then I can stop faffing. So let's just no, let's go down to MFP. So we did a couple of, uh, we did two. So we did this one. So March, we started that. So I spent so four hundred and twenty-four. Let's just round it up. Four hundred and twenty-five. Let's round. So four hundred and twenty-five quid on that one plus. I wasn't happy with that campaign, so I stopped it, and then I retwigged it. Then we got this one, the April campaign, and then we spent. Ah, oh yeah, so that's better. Ten nine one one, so ten ten nine twelve, so plus ten nine twelve, eleven three three seven. So here we go. That's better. That makes more sense. So we spent eleven three three seven in marketing. But remember, it didn't really. I didn't need eleven grand just sat in my bank account because we were cash flowing it. So we were having fifteen quid a month, um, fifteen times a thousand twenty. This was coming in because fifteen thousand three hundred in sales were coming in. But obviously, we had to use a lot of stock to buy. We had to buy lots of stock, etc. So we weren't making any profit off off the front end. Long story short. But in essence, but here's here's the thing. What is the CPA? So in our cost per acquisition to get one of these is 11,337, divide that by 1,020. This is the beautiful thing. It was costing us 11 pounds 11p to get a customer that would give us 15 quid, which is great. So it's quite rare that happens. Let's get back to marketing. Oh my Lord, loads of tabs. But so this is why the offer is everything. Uh, I, I split test a few things. So this one, I stopped this. It, it got 45 conversions, but look at this. Um, no, in fact, they're about the same, but this one took off. So look at this. This had 756 shares, 1,600 comments, and I think like, 1200 likes it was ridiculous and all of the comments were like oh yes i want this i want this i want this blah 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 so it, it this and so what happened once i found this advert that worked um can i view and uh, share a link i just want to so copy the link let's put it in here so you can actually see what's happening in it show ad i'm now going to be plastered with this ad um until i there we go. So this is the advert. Keep your child busy during the school break. Blah blah blah. Um, ignite their imagination. Yeah. So yeah, for one pound eighty-seven a week, it could be a great. You know, I'll open this so you can see the landing page as well. Um, yeah, sixteen hundred comments, thirteen hundred shares, and the comments were on and on and on. It was just like signed up, and everyone was sharing it. So even though that advert itself only got. Um, what was it? it was eight, let's X out there. Eight hundred and twenty-four conversions due due to the sharing. Um, yeah, we got a thousand and twenty in in the end. And I'll show you the spreadsheet. 
du, 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 MFP master. I'll move that on another page so I don't breach GDPR. <clears throat> so yeah, so that was good. We're driving this page and remember I'd split test this loads during Christmas etc but I found that this worked. So we had the video which showed what it is, find your ferry and remember a landing page you don't you never drive traffic to your main website you're just wasting money you need to drive them to a direct landing page so here um, I remember with landing pages you know you need to sell with emotion and then justify with logic um, so this is what it looks like they're cool letters from aria and what's even better is that we get so much mail we get i'm not i'm not even shitting you we get at least 50 letters a week from kids writing back to the ferry <laughs> literally all our mail is aria mail as in mfp and so what we now do which we we found by default by accident which is a nice perk um is that these kids are writing back to aria asking questions and stuff now we can't reply um you know via letter um because it will just add too much complexity so what we do is every single letter we're, we've got a massive backlog by the way every letter ellie takes a picture of the letter and responds to the questions. Um, so if we go to posts, this is on the MFP website. We've got, there we go. And then she's replying to the letters. And honestly, her one when we get our new office, our moving house um, in a month, we're going to have a hot the fairy wall. And what we want to do is plaster the whole wall with all of these letters. Um, and it's nuts, but here's the cool thing. This is a great marketing tool um, because it'll, you know, it's, it's good for engagement, etc. People are taking videos and like all sorts of stuff. So it's good. But going back to the actual numbers, um, and I'll show you this. Um, here we go. Eight week off uh, current members. Now I'm gonna zoom out of this so you can't see it too much I'm just trying to figure out how to zoom out on a Google sheet there we go this will do so this is a Google sheet and it's showing you all of the trialers now these red lines are people that have already said I don't want to convert I don't I don't want to pay the 15 quid a month at the end of the trial okay so obviously th there's gonna be a lot of people opting out and this goes on for on and on and on because there's a thousand, there's <laughs> over a thousand now. Um, but what we found so far is that you won't see, so this green thing here, I'm not going to zoom in because there's too much private details. These are people that have rolled over. Now, obviously, it's too early to tell how many people, like um, what the conversion rate will be. But what we can then do is look at a, a rolling two month thing because it's an eight week trial. So we can go right out of the last two months you know how many people rolled over etc and look at all these that have already rolled over and long story short the conversion rate so far is 65 percent now don't get carried away we had a little um little dance in the kitchen when we were when i when i was 65 percent. i was like jesus christ but with things like this um i look at the three month um, co conversion rate because some people may go, oh look, I've, I've accidentally signed over, signed up for this fifteen quid a month. I'm going to cancel it next month, etc. So, what I probably see happening is that in month one, it could be like a sixty five percent conversion rate. Then a whole bunch will drop off, and then it may be fifty percent. But the engagement so far is super strong. So let's say it ends up being forty percent, which I think is actually more likely with this. 40%, 1,020 times 0.4, we're going to end up with 408 fairies, uh, plus the, the 40 or so we have. So I think it's a bit more. So we're going to end up with 450 fairies in total. 450 times nine pounds a month. We're going to blast through that target. We're going to hit four grand a month profit with this. And we started in November and we've barely used any marketing. I know we've spent a lot of marketing here, but we've just cash flowed it out of the sales that came through. So, um, yeah, so we won't know, because I turned the ads off a few weeks ago. So in about two months time, or no, about in a month and a half, we'll know the, 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 the first conversion rate. But so far, it's really good. Um, 
Can we show the ad that didn't work as well? Yeah, definitely. I could go all day with showing you the ads that didn't work. Um, so in terms of the presentation, this is, I guess, the end of the formal presentation. So let's, uh, I've been going on for a while. We started off with like 100 odd people. There's 46 of you left. So you guys are uh, serious, nice one, <laughs> or just not busy, or you're skiving. <laughs> but the, yeah, so this is everything. Um, let's go into Q&A. And I'll show you the first thing I saw was show the videos the stuff that didn't work. So let's MFP. Oh yeah, we've had to hire a full-time member of staff now, <laughs> um, who's literally just folding envelopes and stuff. So there, the child that worked. MFP. That's the March one. Why? So let's look at that one quickly. Oh God. Facebook doesn't like you opening tabs in Facebook Ad Manager. That wasn't the bad one. Uh, let's find a really bad one. Let's change the date. So this is a Chris Christmas rollover. Yeah, this is a Christmas one. It did all right, but you can see we no that was okay. M three three no that was okay. Let's just click the first one. This can't have been that good. So I was targeting business owners and other other bits and bobs. Evidently, it didn't convert at all. So we spent like 200 quid. Yeah, so I spend a couple hundred quid on an ad. And if it doesn't work, then I, I just turn it off. But let's look at the actual ad. Six comments. So you can see the comments. Um, yeah, so this is, so this didn't work. Because remember, I said we did, okay. So the first thing is that we, if I can annotate this. So this is interesting. So the first first iteration, remember I said we did a three month trial for 45 pounds. And that had a massive no, no, no one liked it. Then I was like, okay, let's try, let's change the price. Let's do 39 pounds. So as you can see here, we did a 39 pound. I didn't change anything else. I just changed the price. And it was still, as you can see here, look at this, Kaylee Burton. 39 pounds for three months, blah, 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 this is you know, a little expensive, blah, blah. Only girls get ripped off for the tune of 40 quid. I was like, oh my God, it's ridiculous. Um, and literally one tweak was all it took. So we turned it into a two month trial for 15 quid, um, which is just nuts. Because when you look at that, so 30, um, 39 divided by well, well, yeah, so yeah, it, there's, there's lots that are wrong, but basically, it was, it was the offer that it, people didn't like um, with that. Um, I just want to show you one other. There must be, if we go beyond that, you'll probably see even worse ads. So let's scroll back down again MFP4, MFP1, MFP sales to push. Yeah, look at this one. So this is October, November. Okay, so we started in October, not November. So this is probably the fir very first advert we did. I spent 195 quid to get one sale. So that's bad. Um, and it just didn't work. MFP3, so this one, a little bit better. But we we're just basically waffling around trying to find our offer until I just tried to simplify it. Because and, and, I tried something really complex and it just didn't work. And in the end, I just went straight to, um, where has it gone? Trial to sale, and that's all we're gonna do. Now, moving forward, so let's say this does well. So let's just say, let's zoom in a bit. This is how you scale a business, by the way. So everything I've talked about so far is setting up a brand new business, etc. But no, people, a lot of people, they, they do well at this stage, and then they just stay put. This is how you scale. And this is all I do with business, by the way. I, I, I do nothing special. So trial, sale, yeah, eyeballs, Facebook, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's say it's the dust settles and it's 30%, okay? I'm being really pessimistic here. We, we've shown, yeah, and it, it, and so what this means is that I get 300 clients for every thousand leads. Now, obviously we were getting these, so it was actually costing us 11 quid to get 
um, a £15 sale. So, But let's just say the trial costs them, the marketing, etc., as in the trial, will cover marketing. Okay, so let's say that's neutral. So once I scale up a bit, the, obviously it's not going to be as good. So let's say zip mar zip marketing ends up being zero. So what this means um, is let's say we have to recruit let's say um, another person and, and beef up the you know the infrastructure a bit and proper pr properly formalize the business so let's say the the profit goes down to eight pounds per month per um, per client okay per what we call them as fairy technically it's not a fairy it's a pen pal but that's what we call them. eight quid a month per fairy so in this what this means is if it's costing us um, yeah, so first of all, you need to work out what it's, what ha, what the real CPA is, the cost per acquisition, the actual cost per acquisition to get these hard customers down or the clients down here. So um, let's just say if we're selling a fifteen pound trial, let's say it is fifteen quid. So in order to get that, so fifteen times a thousand, so it's going to cost us fifteen grand, okay, in marketing. So fifteen grand, divide that by the actual clients that we get. 300 so 15 times divide that by 300 equals 50 so to get someone paying uh, 15 quid per month it costs us 50 quid so this is so this is a hard CPA that I can hang my hat on okay now I know my hard CPA and as in a CPA which I can really hang my hat on I can then go to the market I can go to town with this because then I, we can work out our, our stretch goals. So let's say, for example, Ellie and I sit down and we want a business, a proper business this time, and we want a business that's chucking out um, 20 grand a month profit. Uh, profit, Okay? Well, what do I do? Well, if I want 20 grand a month profit, um, <clears throat> well, that's, first of all, how many fairies is that? So 20,000, divide that by, let's say it's eight quid a month profit, we need two and a half thousand fairies how much is it going to cost me to get two and a half thousand fairies 50 quid okay well two and a half thousand fairies times 50 quid great all it's going to cost is hundred and twenty five thousand pounds in marketing and that's not per month that's total marketing now what we can then do is obviously I can do like a three-month campaign and just blow um, 125 grand like I could spend like 40 grand a month on Google Instagram Facebook YouTube I'll do the whole spectrum not just Facebook I use Facebook as my as my testing ground because once you have a funnel that works so for example that landing page I know that works I know the conversion rates and then you expand the marketing so long story short I will then go to the market I borrow I, I will just go to borrow money literally that is all I do and where do I go to borrow money? I'll go to investors or whatever. Um, I don't really want to use my own capital because my own capital is always sat in my investors, my trading accounts, my cryptos, my other businesses. So I don't want to waste capital there. It's much cheaper and more efficient for me to go out and borrow the money. So let's say I struggle borrowing the money. Um, and the thing is, mind you, it'll be a lot easier because we've got endless amounts of proof. Like we've got this nice story going on. We got, you know, we started in October. Um, we <clears throat> we you know we got loads of marketing details we've done some big campaigns yada 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 so let's say i go and borrow 120k um 125k no by the way if that's the number that you want to borrow don't go and borrow that you'll end up um hurting yourself borrow more because there's always stuff that you haven't factored you know um so I'll go out and borrow 150 grand. So let's say I will borrow that at, I mean, I would happily pay 10% or oh, hell, let's say I get absolutely bent over and I pay 18, 15% uh, APR over, uh, or it doesn't matter, let's say three years. I'm just working this out. So 150 times 115%, 172, that's if it was one year. I don't know. Let's just let's keep ball ballpark. Let's say it cost me two hundred grand. Okay, so I I got to pay back two hundred grand. Okay, if I'm going to borrow that over a number of years, doesn't matter. Well, 
two hundred grand. Well, it's going to get me my twenty grand a month profit. Don't forget. So th this whole thing equals twenty grand a month profit, which equals two hundred and forty uh, grand per year. Oops, K P A. So this is this is this is easy maths for me because um, I it's, I borrow. Um, I say it's easy maths. I'm struggling to talk right now. Um, so what is the ROI on that? So two hundred. Uh, so so the money is it's cost me fifty grand in, in costs basically. So fifty grand in costs equals yeah. So fifty grand in costs, as in borrowing costs, to basically chuck out a business which chucks out two hundred and forty grand a year profit. Um, it's like it's it's easy. I I mean I could borrow money at twenty percent. Uh, Twenty-five percent. It'll still work. Um, so that is pretty much what every business does. Once you have a business that works, and you're out of pre-poc, so pre-proof of concept, the way to scale is to basically you scale the marketing. So literally, go go and borrow, go and borrow that. Or let's say you can't borrow. Okay. So a lot of people go down the equity route. So I want to show you how the maths works for equity. So put it this way. Let's say you go to um, <clears throat> you want to borrow 150, right? Or no, you, you're going to sell 150 grand of your equity to someone, and let's say you're going to give away because you're really generous 20% of the business for 50k, okay? Um, and Mr. or Mrs. Investor comes along and goes, yeah, okay, okay, sure. So they give you, they buy 150 grand um, of you know um, of your business, uh, 150 grand of equity, so 20 percent. So they they've now got 20 percent. Now let's do the maths. You you simply plug that whole 150 grand into the business. You've now got a business that's doing 240 grand per year profit. Now with a subscription-based business, um, it's the how long a client stays with you for determ determines the business multiplier. But worst case scenario, let's say you get absolutely screwed over on the multiple and your business only has a multiple of three. Well, what this means is that your business is now worth 240 times three, which is 720. You've now got a business which is worth 720 grand. Um, <clears throat> and 20% of that business, which your investor owns, so times 20% is 144 grand. So not only does this investor now have um, 144 grand of equity, this person is also getting 20% of the dividends. So let's say you are dispute, dispersing or distributing that uh, 20 grand a month. 20 times 20 grand. So he's getting. So this person is getting four grand per month in dividends and has got equity like this person is going to be happy as Larry because that just the dividends alone four grand a month times 12 is 48 grand a year so 48k and what has he given you 150 so 48,000 divide that by 150k he's making a 32% ROI or Roki return on capital invested and his actual capital hasn't really disappeared because he's got equity in the business. This is how you scale a business, but this is, I mean, this is for another a live session, a long time down the down the way, but I'm aware I've gone off on one. It's been two freaking hours, sorry. Um, I'm gonna go answer the question. So if you want a question answered, please pop them in the chat box. I'm gonna scroll down. Um, blah, blah, blah. And that's why, <clears throat> mate. Are you still here? Is it Fami Fame? I forgot how to pronounce your first name, mate. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, and that's why you see all random adverts on Facebook. I have no idea why. Yeah. Um, does the so David said? Does the book need to be customized? Makes it much cheaper. If not, it's better if it is. Um, but yeah. But if it isn't, then it will be. It makes it a lot easier if it isn't. 
so there's no real questions. Okay, so here we go, Jordan. How do you approach a situation with clients who go through your paid product, paid product for prospect, are happy, then when purchasing the product for client and receive this, uh, they're not happy with it? When you've ensured it wasn't a service or delivery. So let me understand that. So they've done your trial product, they then bought your main product and they're not they're not happy. I guess this is just client relations. Um, from like if you've promised, if you've delivered what you've promised, then you've done nothing wrong. I think what's happened is maybe you've, uh, or you could have done something wrong. You could have misled them on the marketing, etc. So you have to un actually understand the the nub of the cause. Sometimes people just want to kick off, um, and not all customers. You know, the customer is not always right. I don't know who what idiot said that. Um, what I've learned in business is that some people are just just raving nuts um, and so I'm actually really selective with who is in my uh, who I deal with so if there's a client a really prob prob troublesome cr cl uh, client I will literally boot them out I'll say thanks for you're not for us blah 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 we're gonna terminate services don't be scared of firing clients um, so so V, if you test the waters with an initial startup capital of 500 quid, how would you allocate the funds? What percentage would you spend on the product development, marketing, etc.? Um, it obviously this depends. So it's a really good question. Um, it depends on what you're doing. If you've got a physical product, um, I would, yeah, I, I would buy one product first, and then I would set up. A, a basic funnel to set up a landing page etc so you can sell it so connect PayPal stripe to it etc get all the landing pages done so the thank you page blah 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 and then just go and so, try and sell one product so maybe do a little bit of Facebook ad to see you know uh, like what I'll do is I would sell it at a good price so you may even sell it at a loss but what you need to basically see is like is your funnel is your is your your um, client attraction journey working or just go to friends and not friends and family I would go to like net free networking events um, and see if you can sell it because what you need to understand is like what does your product actually work like do people actually want it and a lot of the times that people they're setting up business that people don't actually need or want and you really need a product that people want not need everyone needs to lose weight get richer blah 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 but people buy what they want not what they need so I would yeah so go to yeah networking events and try and get organic clicks on your website and, and try and find out what the conversion rate is you know from landing page to sale and then once you sort and, and you can do Facebook as well you can do like ad spend of you know 10 quid a day and see what your rough conversion rates are but it'll take you a while it'll take you a fair while to figure out the the, the rates but um, if you it is hard with 500 quid it, I'm not gonna lie it, it is hard you, you have to do more organic stuff you have to you know go out and not knock on doors but you you have to talk to a lot more people um, and just go yeah all I did in the first couple of years of business was I did every free networking breakfast lunch and dinner I could find and in every town I mean there's BNI 4N there's all these sorts of things so I spent three years of hard graph networking um, just to get the product your, your business out there um, but then I realized this is too much hard work. So what I then did is just went and borrowed money. I bought, once I had a funnel which I thought was good enough, I'd borrow money, pump all of that money into the funnel, and then boom, and the business grows. Um, Dan, oh, thanks, mate. Keep going. <laughs> I, I could, but <laughs> this, yeah, I, I, we'll end up with like one person left, you and I. <laughs> um, Question, biggest question for me, I have an idea but can't develop it myself. Where can I find, connect with people's skills that complement the idea and form a business partnership? I want an MVP uh, with someone who, uh, okay. Right, big, big error. Incoming your way, um, M Chow, whoever M Chow is. Um, what you're about to do is fall into uh, a J-curve business model. Um, so a J-curve biz model is this, and you need to avoid this at all costs. So 
this is where you will need a lot of money and you go in negative equity okay and then eventually the the, the goal is to you, you know you go underwater for a bit and then you know and then hopefully the business does well and then you'll you'll make a, a, a profit a, a typical example of a j-curve business is a restaurant okay so to set up a restaurant it costs a lot you've got to get the premises the buildings you've got to buy the tables the chairs all the paraphernalia all the rubbish that comes with setting up a restaurant and so you'll be massively in debt so or underwater so you could be like anywhere from you know 20 to well oh, jesus some people spend 200 grand setting up a new restaurant um but guess what happens? Most people, they get to this bit here, or, or this bit here, and they realize, oh shit, I can't actually make any sales. And then it does that, and then they give up. I'm out, you know, they, they, they give out, they give up. And with a J-curve business, this could take anywhere between one to five years before you even hit break even. And a lot of tech businesses, or tech ideas I see these days, so I, I'm guessing some, your business may be a tech thing because you may need a coder um, especially I mean loads of people trying to do blockchain type stuff I just wouldn't I, I, I really wouldn't um, your first business must not be the business that you think you're gonna knock it out of the park with it must not um, you, you need to start with a business that you really don't give a shit about whether you, whether it fails or not and you need to in your head you need to call this a project you're just setting up a project and projects come and go they fail um, there's no wait whereas lots of people they they go oh, I'm setting up a new business they tell all the friends and family but there's a lot of weight that goes with that because you know next family gathering they're like, oh how's your business going like, oh shit someone asked I don't want to talk about it but a project no one cares so yeah don't get into a J curve business it's painful you need a business that is in profit straight away like yeah um, the or at, at the very least sell the service or business uh, or, or product sell a service or product ah, and sell it for cheap to get you know your first 20 clients etc and then get loads of test um, testimonials etc uh, and then all of a sudden you've got 20 odd testimonials you got 20 happy clients because they got they got in at the base level they got in dirt cheap and you can use it as a, a launch pad to, to really to, to grow but I, I, I need a bit more detail on this I and I personally wouldn't be giving away equity straight off um, like giving away equity is is expensive like for example if you did have a let's say remember it goes back to that thing ideas are cheap it's execution which is everything like if it is a good idea um, and it is a coder that you need let's say I would just pay I would pay to get it done like go and borrow money oh, again I don't really want you to go and borrow money if this is your first business especially um, because what you'll find is that every time I've done a 50 50 business it's failed because what one director will always do more work than the other resentment kicks in then you end up in a um, a lockdown environment where um, no one can agree on anything it's it's just, it's just not good uh, and if it's a coder once you know yeah just just go and buy that stuff so um, Sam do you prefer a subscription model to sell to sending a course for a, for a one-off fee I personally um, so regarding yeah this question you what you need is a payment plan business not a subscription business so I know I've used the word subscription uh, a fair while in, in the past but there's a slight difference subscription means that they can leave whenever they want okay and so it's hard so my fairy pen pal is actually a subscription based business so this is one thing I'm telling Ellie is like we, we this is this is dangerous you don't want to be in a sus subscription based business because you can't hang your hat on the numbers like you don't know whether someone's gonna stay with you a month two months four months and it's hard to plan with your marketing and, and spending etc whereas a payment plan and it's it's a thing so that, that you know that it's, it's an, an amount of money that they're paying over three or twelve installments etc so what's happening is, is it's a different legal thing so that basically they're buying a whole thing 
but they're, they're, they're choosing to split it up over X amount of months and they can't just leave. So in their mind, up front, up, up front, they know that they're spending, that, that they're buying this amount, this product for this amount, but they're just splitting it. So what you'll find, like if we take the WAP, the WAP is a payment plan business. So if you join the WAP, and plus with, with the WAP, like there's loads that you need to learn. So you're not gonna learn it all in a month or two. So it's a year <clears throat> or, so you either pay 30 quid a month and it's a 12 month contract or you get a little bit of a discount so basically you're buying you get two months free you buy 300 quid up front so yeah that that is the key when it comes to um, that's the slight difference so if you're in a business which is a subscription based model right now you need to pivot like fuck um, just you need to pivot into a payment plan business I, I promise you um, next question <clears throat> Craig, is it worth looking at advertising that works organically before spending money on advertising? Yes, I do. Um, because that way you can get some optics on your conversion rates. It's free free optics, but free conversion rate optics there. Uh, I realize the cost that the examples worked out well. Um, it was a cost that too, but have you an example of marketing that's worked well without spending on cost per clip? <clears throat> yeah, as I said, I just did free networking groups uh, and then hustled. But And I think it's a rite of passage. When you're first starting out your very first business, you need to get out there. You really do. Like, for example, um, and this is the power of networking, if you do it right. Um, so when I first got out there, I was a bullion dealer. I was a gold and silver, silver bullion dealer like 10 years ago. Um, and I, I hit, I did BNI, I did for networking, I did Norwich um, Chamber of Commerce for a little bit. It was, I did a shit, didn't like it. But look at this. This is Angie. Hi, Angie. Um, <clears throat> blah blah blah. I was searching through my desk the other day and came across the first business card that you ever gave me. It was this awesome black and white. Yeah, this. And I met her at BNI years ago. Um, Christmas jumpers and backflips. Oh, yeah, that was when I was young and silly. So, yeah. So think and so I think if you're going to do that route and you're going to um, go down the networking thing, the only thing you should invest good well good in is a good business card. Um, don't have a tacky Vista print type thing. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, and you need to be consistent. But the thing is organic is tough and it has a long lead or sorry long lag or long lead whatever same thing so it will take you months and months and months to develop the relationships and for the money and and, and for the referrals to come in and for the money to come in so for me I, I'm all about time and it's just too too costly I'd rather just go out and borrow money and then get my results quickly um, or, yeah so yeah it's tough uh, business is risky when you're first starting out and it will re require costs unfortunately um, content marketing is working for me in one niche yeah so you can you know put loads of content out there and people will buy from you over time but it takes time it's taken a while oh yeah <laughs> as you said it's taken a while though for Google to pick it up and settle down in the rankings from blog to webinar to monthly product also look at building Facebook groups for your community yeah all of that works it really does I mean one of the so when you're looking at content marketing etc one of the holy grails of um, out there is if you can get a page so if you, you can um, in fact let's take the UK if you want to be page one list you know top spot page one on Google in terms of for SEO over the whole of the UK K it's going to cost you a lot of freaking money. It's going to cost you millions. It's going to cost you years of time. Um, but you don't need to. What you can do is geo tag the hell out of, um, geo niche the hell out of it. So, for example, here's Norwich. Well, actually, Norwich should really be more like this. Norwich is over here. Um, and let's say it's Norfolk. So, what I could do, is, what you can do if you want to go down the, the, the content type stuff, is you can build a page. Let's move over here. I'm going to move. So let's just say Norfolk. 
and I need a thinner pen because this is going to take up so much space otherwise. Oh, come on, pen. There we go, nice and thin. So, I don't know, let's say you are the... Um, I can't think of any niche right let's plumber <laughs> there we go plumber um, you're a plumber in Norfolk or a plumber in Norwich etc now obviously you don't really care about being seen in Kent or you know Margate or, or whatever you want to be, basically get your your jobs in Norfolk or even just just Norwich but let's say you're, you're aiming to take out the whole of Norwich and be uh, Norfolk and be the, the number one plumber in, in Norfolk what you can then do is get a website or even a landing page um, <clears throat> which is so specific to Norfolk okay so you tag it obviously speak to an SEO person but you make it really Google friendly so you know you know you're a Norfolk plumber you call yourself the Norfolk plumber .uk or whatever and you spend money on SEO uh, and do content marketing etc so have a blog and get everything pointing there LinkedIn your, your, your Insta YouTube um, definitely you know have videos of you fixing pipes and getting wet and, or, or maybe not wet whatever and then over time you're ranking when someone types in plumber Norfolk or plumber Norwich it, you're gonna get up there and it may take let's say two to three years but here's the holy grail eventually two to three years and after a fair bit of money for example you can then just turn off the tap you don't need to spend any more money on SEO or maybe just to maintain it a bit but you will organically be right up there on page one um, and so all of a sudden that marketing cost that you are spending in SEO you will then go straight to the, your pocket your bottom line but that's all very well and good if you just want to you know coast along etc what you could do if you wanted to take out the nation, if you wanted to, if you're going to do this properly, let's say you 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 now own Norfolk, you're your number one plumber in Norfolk, and you wanted to expand aggressively, what you can then do is go and borrow a whole bunch of money and have like this three to five year plan. And what you'll do is you'll you the the brand will be um, <clears throat> the London plumber, the Reading plumber, the Gloucester plumber, the um, bumfuck nowhere plumber. Um, what's it called? Cornwall, the Cornwall, the Cornwallian plumber, um, <laughs> the Birmingham plumber, etc. And all you're doing is you're creating pages that are specific to, um, though, though, and you're geo niching, etc. And then what you'll have after two to three years is you'll be right up there, page one in the top spot, and then all of a sudden you can turn off your CEO. To you know, you can turn off ninety percent of your your ad spend, and all of a sudden you'll get constant leads flowing in, and then you, all you will be doing is you'll be hiring plumbers to facilitate all of the business that you're getting in all of these little geo niches, etc. That is a proper business at scale. Um, so yeah. Anyway, moving on. Um, so I would advise against using Facebook ads to do affiliate marketing instead. Is it too expensive? It really def <clears throat> affiliate marketing. It, it really depends on what your commission. Is. If you're doing affiliate marketing, it really depends what they're paying you. Are they paying you cost per click, cost per acquisition? Um, wh what is it? Uh, and also, like, how much are they are you getting per click or per acquisition, etc. So that really depends. There's too many variables there. Um, does the WAP go to rolling uh, after 12 months? Yes, it does. By the way, unashamed plug, go and just do the WAP. You will be surprised at how much content is in there. Uh, interesting, uh, sorry, so I've got an issue with how to make my low cost offering recurring. It ticks the boxes, low price point, high margin, highest volume, etc. Okay, what's the issue? Adam, could you add more meat to the bones, please? Um, how to make it recurring it's an online course yeah yeah keep on more, more detail please I'll come back to this um, I do geo tag Facebook or Google Ads to make it much faster definitely a good mix of SEO and ads required yeah 100% mate isn't that risky strategy you can get hit by Google penguin panda obviously you would get a, an SEO person to do this but yeah you you do you would do a mix of direct response I Facebook ads and uh, and SEO um, so Adam going back to your question so it's an online course 
okay why not so 25 quid and they get everything but people get all the content yeah uh, okay so here's the here's the thing with your business but is it health and nutrition I can't remember yeah that's that's the one so you're in health and fitness which is the most one of the most convoluted populated sectors niches industries out there everyone's in it um, these days so obviously I don't know your niche but you you definitely need a niche you need everyone is a health and nutritionist these days so you need to basically first of all find out that niche okay you need to build your own brand type 2 diabetes perfect not that that's a good thing but like yeah diabetes like you are the diabetes man or the diabetes destroyer um, whatever you want to call yourself but like obviously everything of your website your marketing you need to be only known as that okay you need to forget about like losing sales or what because some people worry about niching um, people think oh my if I brand myself as the diabetes destroyer I'm gonna lose out on sales on people that want to lose weight or do whatever um, I would forget about that you will make millions if you do if you execute properly in just this tiny little niche this tiny little silo um, <clears throat> and once you're big enough you can then branch off so the so when you do so your <laughs> yeah that's so true um, so with this your funnel should be um, obviously you, you, you do uh, Facebook and then just normal content you know YouTube stuff everything and you, you're driving towards your um, your course okay and if it's 25 quid and this is basically your your lead magnet your lead gen your trip or whatever so 25 quid and that gives them everything but what I would then do is you need to add to your business here and unfortunately I know a lot of people do this but it works I've got a business that does exactly this um, consultation call and then one two one okay so this is now your new funnel or what it should be um, you're finding the course is sabotaging the one-to-one -one stuff yeah so it will be I mean so some you know, there's do it yourself then there's done with you and then there's done for you um, everyone will find everyone is different everyone will want one or two of these things but here's the thing you a lot of people so the DIY people will always yeah they'll, they'll lap this up the 25 stuff and then they'll bugger off that's fine that's mm. absolutely fine that's just adding to your brand five years later they, they may come back to you or, or whatever but you your one-to-one -one session it needs to be expensive unfortunately it needs to be something like um, someone that really needs your help okay and it needs like it, I know this is going to really stretch your internal um, thinking here, but you need to be charging something like two grand for a uh, six month um, one to one, you know, you're going to yeah. accountability yeah. type thing, okay? It's, you're going to feel really uncomfortable doing something like that, but you need to do that. Two grand, three grand, okay, yeah, three grand is even better. Um, two, three grand, whatever. And so then it's a case of, okay, well, Geez, well, let, let's just do the maths. So I don't know what your targets are. Um, roughly, what would you like per um, per month? What would your business? What would you you want to be taking home per month? Basically, fifteen k a month net. Nice. Okay. So all you basically need is uh, five. Yeah. So you need five of these, right? Okay. How do we get five of these? You need five of them. So. The consultation call to one to one. Let's just say it's you're really bad at closing or whatever. Let's say it's twenty five percent. It's going to be pretty high, but you could do better. Um, but let, I'm just being pessimistic. So let's say that's twenty five percent. Cool. Yeah, strike rate thirty. That's, that's nice. Now for those that complete the twenty five pound course, you would have put so much value in. Blah 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 blah. Um, what is the percentage here? So let's be really ballpark. Let's say. 
Nah, let's say 5%. 1 in 20 people will, out of curiosity, have a call with you. One, because, they, you know, they, they'll probably do that. Just say, thank you. I love the course. See you later. But it doesn't matter. Let's say it's 5%. Okay, well, let's do the math. Now, this is the easy bit. 5 divided by 0.25 is 20. Could have done that in my head. Honest. <laughs> and then 20 divide that by... Um, wait a minute. I've done that wrong. 5 divided by 0.25 is 20, yeah, sorry, it is right, 20, and then you've got another 5% here, so 20 divided by 0 0.05, you need 400 of these, and then how much is it going to cost you to sell a £25 course? I am going to tell you right now, you're going to be spending 100 quid, at least, probably, most likely, 150, yeah, there we go, spot on. Put it this way, I've got um, one of my courses is £99 and I'm spending like 400 quid to sell a £99 course. So here's the thing, so if you want 400 people to do here, so times 150, you need 60 grand. Done. That is it. So this is, uh, this sounds crazy, but you need to spend 60 grand in getting 400 of these these people okay obviously that will come with loads of testimonials make sure you get testimonials etc um, that will then result in um, 20 phone calls it's actually gonna be a lot higher than that by the way it, you'll probably get like five ten percent um, and then that will result in that so you're so basically twice a year you need to put in you know 60 grand marketing but obviously you you'll, you'll be spreading this out you know with a monthly ad campaign but here's the thing um, you go out and buy, borrow 60 grand over five years. Um, I don't know, just what is the 60? Uh, I've got a calculator on me, as in the finance calculator. S let's just say your total, you'll pay about 80 grand, divide that by five. Uh, 60 grand a year, divide that by 12. Yeah, I don't know. Let's just say you, you go out and borrow 60 grand, and it's going to cost you 1200 quid a month. Okay, cool. Well, you spend 1200 quid a month, you just add that to your outgoings. That's now part of your OPEX. Cool, but you now got 60 grand. And then this is all you do. You, you, you've got this. Don't forget, those 400 people times 25 quid, that's 10 grand there that you've got back. And that 10 grand you just put back into marketing. Um, and then this down here is going to be your profit. So I know f to a lot of people, this model is super, super scary. But that is the only model that your business will be profitable with, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Put it this way, the WAP, I haven't actually scaled that, I've been a bit preoccupied. But the WAP, um, it's costing, so let's say it's 300 quid a year to, to be a WAPper. I'm <laughs> at the moment, it's costing me like a grand. Um, and it, like, in fact, I'll show you one of the last trials we did. Just to get us so to, to do the 30 day trial is seven pounds, right? Seven pounds to get like you'd be surprised how much it's costing me to get a, a single trialer. Where is the what? Oh, it's the wrong one, so it's over here. It's different now, different account manager. Um, look at this. So I did one, this cost me 326 quid to get one seven pound trialer, and here's another one. To get one trialer, it cost me 200 quid to get one trialer. Um, here's another one. It cost me 2,000 pounds to get five trialers. So that's 400 quid to get a seven pound trial. Like the WAP, I've been woefully failing. <laughs> At this rate, my fairy pen pal is going to overtake the WAP, and MFP was supposed to be a WAP experiment. So, anywho. Um, I hope this makes sense. I th I'm going to have to call it a day. It's been two and a half hours. There's still 36 of you. So you guys are absolute legends. So I want to have a look at you. Who are you? I'm going to stop the share. And here you are. This is recording. So this, you guys, are a picture of dedication. So thank you. Two and a half hours with me. So nice one. Um, this is being recorded. God knows who's going to watch a two and a half hour recording of this. But I'm, I'm hoping it will help someone. Um, so yeah, thank you. Has it has it helped? It has helped some of you. Cool. Yeah, I mean, 
please, I, I, I implore you, do the, the trial. I mean, in the 30 days, you can get all of these things. I mean, the, the WAP plan is definitely going to help. The, the new biz WAP uh, mapping thing will, will definitely help. Like, I, I don't want to bore you with all of this, but yeah, just do it. You, you will pat yourself on the back. You, will, you won't regret it. Um, I didn't know much about... Uh, cool. Right, thank you so much. Um, and I will see you all soon. I'll probably have a shave by the time I next see you guys. <laughs> Toodles.